Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and in Kenya we say all protocols observed when there are so many distinguished people in the room. Bono has been too kind in his opening statement in my regard. I'd like to thank the Manatos family and the Washington Oxyday Foundation for this initiative. For this lesson, this honor they have created upon us, helping us keep the flame of democracy and freedom alive in real ways. My struggles are puny compared to those of so many ordinary Kenyans and Africans working hard to build not only flourishing economies, but successful democracies of some kind as well. It is with humility that I find myself the recipient of an, of an award, OHI, which captures not only the fighting spirit and sense of honor of the Greek people during the Second World War that served to shape the outcome of that conflict that in turn shaped the post-war post order in which we all live. It encapsulates a deeper yearning among all people for freedom with dignity, without fear, and the many corruptions that very strong back of fear carries. I will admit it was only when I received a letter from the Ohide Foundation that I read properly about the role of Greece in opposing Nazism during the Second World War. It's not a story that has been told enough. This morning, I had a special honor of being present when Mr. David Harris was being awarded the Metropolitan Chrysos Tomos Award. I hope I pronounced that right. I apologize. The Metropolitan Christosomos Award at the Capitol Building. Again, I was moved by the small action with such huge and inspiring consequences that took place during the Second World War in Greece when, when the bishop and the mayor were asked to hand over the names of all the 275 members of the Jewish community under their charge, and instead the bishop handed over his and the mayor's name only. It was an act of courage and her words I heard used today, empathy and dignity too. A profound faith and commitment to the dignity of the human person. But it was also a demonstration of love, not only for his flock, but for all humanity, that may have also served to provoke him into this action. And this comes from my experience over 20 years in the fight against corruption. As I said, it, but for all the humanity, but that may have also served to provoke him into this action. Also a sense of humor, which the Greek people are well known for, because I'm sure the bishop must have contemplated multiple versions of the Nazi commander's reaction once he saw what was on the piece of paper. That must have been a priceless moment for him quietly. He could have given the 275 names or the two names. And these are the choices that we make every day when you're fighting corruption. We, we say that you have four choices when you're fighting corruption. You have loyalty, where you, you just go along, you go with the flow. You don't, don't, don't do anything, but do, every, do what everybody else is doing. You have another option, which is voice. You can say something about it, make some noise, complain. Um, you have a, another option, which is to exit. Say, okay, I'm not going to participate. I'm getting out of here. I don't want to deal with this. And you have a fourth option when confronted with corruption, which is to organize. And I think that's what the Metropolitan 
quietly did in this dignified way that was so special. With courage, often there is love, and with love, there is often humor. It has been essential to me in all my career in the fight against corruption. It is especially critical at this important time when after the financial challenges of 2008 here in the West that is recovering, the emerging world is emerging. And in the interregnum, a host of morbid symptoms of corrupted institutions have become apparent. The time to tackle some of these systemic weaknesses is now in our global financial system. I'll crave your indulgence slightly and seek to lobby the esteemed leaders here, including the Honorable Senator Sarbanes, who have, I've read about and spoken of countlessly in my uh, work against corruption. Um, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Your Excellencies and all protocols observed. Not, not too long from now, as you know, I come from, from Kenya. The whole continent of Africa is struggling with the issue of accountability, not only with regard to corruption, but with regard to human rights. And we are struggling with it, particularly with regard to the institution of the International Criminal Court. The International Criminal Court is a successor of the Nuremberg Court which tried some of the people who perpetrated some of the crimes that we saw shown on this video today. And so we ask the American government, as I said, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to, to crave your indulgence to lobby slightly for the American government to support Africa to do the right thing with regard to this International Criminal Court and global justice, accountability, and human rights in this regard. The challenges are coming in the coming weeks. I believe firmly that dignity comes before development. The heavy weight corruption forces too many of the world's poor to carry in turn demeans them, divides them, causes volatility and conflict. And at the end of the day, after over 20 years in this anti-corruption business, I can say thank you to the Washington Oxiday Foundation because I've spent a lot of time articulating grand, complex anti-corruption plans for governments, for civil society, for business. I have spent time on technical advice missions with big names, big cars, and write big reports and say big things. But I would like to thank the Washington Oxiday Foundation for, for reminding me here and all of us that, in, that when grappling with corruption, the first step, just like for the Metropolitan, often ideally begins with saying just one word, Ohi. Once again, thank you very much for this singular honor. <laughs>